Welcome back to Rose Education, this is Zap. Today I'm going to be revisiting BNGO by Nanogenomics. This one here, if you haven't heard about their Sapphire product regarding genome mappings, you can watch my previous videos in the description below. I'm going to go through a quick update here, as well as a technical analysis of my expectations for this one coming up. Make sure to drop a like to this video to help this channel grow, subscribe, leave your questions on, let's jump right into this one. So, via Nanogenomics, they have a conference happening on between January 11th and 15th, so we are within that range. They do have all these different kind of uh, panels, etc. So the next one, I believe, is on January 15th, 2021 at 7 a.m. PST. Now, this one here, what's going to happen is it is more off the live session. You still have other ones you can actually continue watch, which is available on demand. Now, the next thing, moreover, is some of the news that we've actually received. So the day three of by now, by next generation, uh, Cytogenomics Symposium Sapphire provides a complete structural variation analysis in solid tumors, enables discovery of normal diagnostics, markers, and drug targets. So the preliminary readout on the uh, Sapphire validation study for brain cancer uh, for, pre for presence path to solid tumors LDT. And they also outperform Onscom array for structural variation and copy number variation detection in solid tumors. Sapphire Pro provides comprehensive and clear picture of structural variation in solid tumors, which has not been possible to date with NGS or ARA. Sapphire offers large opportunity for discovery of new therapeutic targets and prognostics makers in cancers. Uh, sorry, markers in cancers. So that is another bullish one that we have here. The next thing we're coming up for is, well, we're going to look back at the other news on the 13th, which is re it regains compliance with the NASDAQ minimum bid price listing requirement, which is bullish. And if you watch my previous videos, I did mention that would be one of the things eventually to be reached. Uh, it only needs 10 days above $1. And then take day two of the symposium. So they're releasing one new thing a day. Sapphire outperforms Cytogenetics and Heme uh, are... I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce this medical term, but heme malignasis, uh, malignasis uh, is less expensive, provides actionable information faster in single essay. And then you have the next thing as well as on the first, well, first day of the symposium, actually. They did have an offering released up, well, the closing of the offering, and then way before we did have the offering released up, and I'll go exactly in details on that. But for day one as well, what we get to see is another bullish uh, release here. This one here is on the current progress and application developments in prenatal testing validation against traditional cytogenetics and resolution for undiagnostic patients. More details on there, uh, including 100% concordance with standard uh, cytogenetic and molecular methods in genetic disease supported and resolution of undiagnosed rare disease using OGM and in US, Europe, and China. Now, the next thing we have here it's some of the SEC filings I want to go for. So the previous offering was around 2867, 2.867. So we are currently way above there, of course. And then the next thing that we have is, well, we already know how much money they're getting out total out of this one, which is easily enough to as well pay off their debt. Day three of by nanogenomics generation cytogenomics symposium. We already covered through this one here and we already covered day two and we already know the closing of the offerings. Now, institutional buyers here, 12 and the 13th have been just a very, very small position, around four and 5,000 shares, nothing significant there. Uh, I don't even think that would really uh, validate itself as an institutional purchase, just because retail already has more shares than that on average. BNGO, in terms of insider buyers, we don't have anything there. Now, the next thing we want to look into is the Yahoo Finance, uh, basically trying to look into the balance sheets and see, out of that massive amount of money that uh, they raised through the offering how much of how much debt can they pay off because remember that money would probably go to stuff like debts research etc so in general they have around 1.55 billion dollars in terms of their market cap now their total balance sheet here if we go to the last quarter their total live assets is around 41 million now their total liabilities is around 26.7 million so 26.7 million and if we go back, you have $101 million in unwritten public offering. So you can, it's fair to say that they probably have, well, they do actually have enough money to pay off their entire debt. And that is another bullish PR that I'm waiting on because 
probably it will probably be released i don't see why they wouldn't pay off their debt if they can actually go ahead and do so now the next thing here is what i want to cover is technical analysis if you haven't done so please make sure to drop a like to this video and subscribe it's not a cliche i'm trying to say i'm saying every subscribe counts for the discovery of this channel so now on a one week perspective and technical analysis you get to see the 80x is pinpointing that it's closer to 50 usually that's where a bit of pullbacks happen which would probably be fine the last pullback we've seen was all the way from 732 to four bucks and then by back bounce to 687 as we speak moving averages are really bullish the 10 sma is above the 30 ma and the price point is above the 50 sma now, in terms of the willing percent R itself, it really shows it's overbought still, and MACD is quite bullish. Now, momentum looks really strong at 636. Now, on a one-day perspective, things look quite nice as well. Now, the MACD looks like it's gaining back really strong traction. Momentum is one of the best it's been for a while. Now, ADX, it's been above 50 for a while now. So I'll ignore it, but it really just tells you that, be careful, at some point you will see pullbacks, plural, because that would be expected in general. Now, the next thing we're looking at here is willing percent R. This one is a bit overbought in this generate in this level, but it's been overbought and still seen a bit move, a big of a move here. Now, 10 SMA is above the 30 SMA, and the stock price is above the 50 SMA to 200 SMA. What, the, what does that mean? It means that it's all bullish. The 50 SMA is above the 200 SMA. You want smaller SMA value above the bigger SMA value and shows you a bullish movement. Now, the trading action zone between the 10 SMA and 30 SMA is quite big, between 53, 532 and 3 bucks. And if it does dip within that range, you can expect reversals to occur. So that looks nice. On a two-hour perspective, just if you're looking for a bit more of an intra detail, it looks like we might actually get a little bit pulled back, but everything else looks bullish. The ADX shows a very high, well, actually, a trend is here. 31.36, above 30, it starts pinpointing that a trend is forming. And that is a bullish trend. Now, the Bollinger Bands here, it's still within there, 786 to negative 1.7, but I don't like that one because it's really wide. I do prefer the Moving Average Band. But the only indication for the Moving Average Band that I like is that it's pinpointing upwards and increasing in depth. For the sake of argument, it's expected to trade later on in the future, 339, 308, and 278. That's if volume more wasn't in. That is somewhat of the expectation, but you expect this one to continue growing and continue increasing as we go forward. Stochastic Fast and Stochastic Slow are both pinpointing upwards and showing there is very much another leg for this one. Fibonacci retracements gives us a bit of an indication on supports and resistances. The current support is at 630, 5 bucks, 409, 318, 205, and 23 cents. The current resistance sets at 796. Now we can go ahead and you, let's say use the last month and then go on with a one hour perspective. And then go on towards price line action. The current significant support sits at 667. And then below there sits at 605. And then below there you're looking at 553 or 562. And then down below 505. And then we go down to 457. And then down to 47. Significant resistances 722 and 795. Not a lot. It really can break the ceiling very easily. Now comes to the question to end, what do you think about this one? Making this a bit of a short video, if you'd like to see a bit more details, you'll find it in the previous video before. Um, and if you'd like to join our Discord, it's very much of a chat free, very friendly, and we don't tolerate any pumping, you'll find it in the description below. Now towards where I think is going to happen, I definitely think it might see a little bit of a pullback. It probably would bounce back to or above the 6 bucks. Now a very strong resistance of 622, it will bounce probably accumulate a little or just continue on with the push and it will see new highs important thing is to lock in profits but i definitely think that this one here does have a future um, i definitely think that this one is one of the investments that you can put on in terms of penny stocks and it wouldn't be that off it would be part fair partly uh, partly fail uh fair now bngo is going to pay off its debt it has enough money it has a lot of cash in hand and I expect a lot of bullish PRs to come in soon and a lot of free action from the market. Now, for $1.55 billion, it's definitely trading on intrinsic value and not book value. And that is what we're expecting. We're thinking about what is the future end goal for this one. What do you think about the sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like. You have a wonderful day.